Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode, I hope to get a lander on the moon to its pole. Uh, so that's definitely one place we haven't landed at, is uh, either North Pole or South Pole. And so I want to get this lander to one of those locations where we haven't landed at, and I think, uh, I think that is a doable thing. I've uh, packed enough Delta V on it. Yeah, we're not planning to return this, so we're just going to transmit the data. And in fact, we only need a little bit more to unlock the Snap RTG. So that's the main goal. Uh, you can see here the lander. I've called it Luna. Of course, it doesn't bear much resemblance to the actual landers used by the Soviet space program during uh, the early days of space exploration. But um, I've still gone with Luna because it's a good name. And uh, I've got, continued with my uh, naming convention for the launchers, and I've named this Balder, after uh, yet another Norse god. Uh, of course, this one, this Norse god gave uh, the name to Baldur's Gate, of course, uh, if you know the RTG, uh, RPG series. <laughs> I've got RTGs on my mind. Anyway, but uh, so yeah, the lander itself has uh, 3,284, which is way more than enough to make a landing, though I've never landed on the poles of, uh, of the moon before, so that's going to be a new experience. We've also got uh, the, uh, this little tank, this service module, which has 1,200, which is meant to get us into orbit, which might be a little bit trickier because, again, polar orbit. Um, now, I mean, I say might. I, I'm not entirely sure. Haven't done it before. Well, I, I think I've uh, launched stuff into polar orbit around the moon before. Not often, though. Um, the these are uh, this uh, nozzle uh, of the RD zero two one four. The RD zero two one four actually has four nozzles, but uh, basically this is pretending like they could separate them. I don't know if you could actually do that, but okay, whatever works. I couldn't actually find... I, I would have just slapped the RD0214 uh, underneath this. I mean, that would be the logical thing to do. I'm putting 4 anyway. But uh, I, I couldn't find it. So, I mean, we've, we we come very close. But this, uh, I mean, uh, 0210 to 0213, but it has nothing to do with it. Uh, the thrust is... It's a totally different kind of thing. So, I, I don't know. Uh, I, clearly, they don't number things the way that NVIDIA and, uh, you know, uh, graphics cards are numbered, for instance. So, yeah, okay. Uh, I Now, these are actually the lower thrust uh, rockets, and these are the higher thrust rockets that I've put up here. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you put the higher ones down here and the lower ones up there? And that's because these have an infinite number of ignites, and these only ignite five times, so it makes sense that these will just be getting us into orbit, whereas I need to be able, able to relight my rockets uh, as much as I like to land. That's not technically true. Uh, I would be able to do a single burst landing if I could throttle them, but unfortunately I couldn't find a, a, a Russian Soviet uh, rocket that uh, that could uh, that could do that. It's weird. Um, well, of course, uh, uh, I don't know what they would have used for a lunar landing. I, I should check. They must have de designed something, but it's possible that I just don't have it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, I do have the, the lunar ascent and descent uh, engines for the Apollo mission, but uh, that's not what I'm using here. So I went with the RD-856, uh, which is a uh, vernier thruster, actually, and it does not throttle. So that's why I need all the relights. Okay, so that handles that. Of course, these burn UDMH N204. I've got the RCS thrusters configured to that. And otherwise, the launcher is... Uh, uh, well, we, I've fixed up the launcher. Um, I've added a little bit of MMH N204 with some tiny little RCS thrusters uh, to help with stability here. Remember the rolling that we had? So I'm hoping that that will uh, help uh, keep us from doing that. Um, I've resized some of the stages, uh, not too much. And I've also, if you recall down here, this engine was losing its T-TEB, so I, uh, I've blocked it off, so I'll... Uh, I'll free it up before we light it, but otherwise that'll prevent these other 
engines from taking its TTAB. This is the non um, non asparagus staged, if you will, non fuel feeding version. And that's fine because our payload is only 6.6 .6 tons, whereas the capacity of this launcher is 10. So uh, I, I consider it a high probability of success kind of situation as far as Delta V is concerned, but there are other possible issues. Now, of course, I'm, I decided to record this video after figuring out some of my problems that I've been having. Huh. That's a lot less Delta V than I thought I'd be getting out of this. Now you guys saw this. This actually worked out last time. I mean, uh, barely, but it did. And now this thing is telling me that no, no go. Okay, so the game crashed. I mean, I restarted the game. And, and it looks like my numbers are back to the way they should be, so... Who knows? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> uh, I thought I had plenty of margin, and I should have plenty of margin because this rocket was tested for 10 tons and it's only 6.6 .6 ton payload. Here we go again. It's uh, messing up the numbers here. Uh, right when I put on the fairings, it decided to change numbers. I'm just going to take this out to the launch pad and launch it. Let's see if the whole, um, the whole situation with the lag is fixed at least. There is one issue that has not been fixed and that's the noise that came with the second stage. I can't deal with that right now. Uh, I'll have to do some more figuring to find what is causing that. But we should be able to get this mission underway and I'll just sort of uh, cut out the part where there's noise from the second stage. Alright, so uh, here we go. Okay, so here we are on the launch pad, and it looks a little bit better than it was before. Uh, th I have made other changes. Uh, first of all, instead of using my own uh, haphazard configura reconfiguration of the remote tech setting, I'm using a Cerberus RCAF's uh, configuration file for the launch locations, all to have uh, mission control capability. And so that probably helps a lot. And also, I have disabled signal delay because I'm not sure Flight Computer actually works right now with, uh, with Realism Overhaul. There have been uh, forum, uh, t there has been forum talk about that, and maybe the newest Realism Overhaul has fixed that. But uh, since I'm trying things out uh, to fix other issues right now, I'm going to uh, hold off on trying to see whether uh, signal delay is actually okay and we can use flight computer to do all our commands okay so we'll see about that now I'm going to uh, do sort of a two-step process we're going to first minimize our our inclination but we are also going to then do a off-plane transfer as recommended by ASME and that off-plane transfer means that we burn out of our ascending or descending node in order to hit the moon. And that means we hit the moon at our the opposite. Uh, if we burn from our ascending nodes, we'll hit it at our descending node. Uh, you'll occasionally see me do this in stock with interplanetary transfers. Oh, I've picked the wrong one. Uh, but I don't... It's Rendezvous Planner. Okay, uh, but I don't usually do it uh, here because we've been launching out of Cape Canaveral and it's pretty convenient to uh, match inclinations out of Cape Canaveral. But now we are not at Cape Canaveral, we are at Baikonur, so we are we have to do things a little bit differently. Actually, our relative inclination is about as minimal as it's going to get. It's actually, the minimum is at 17 and we're at 18. So we can launch now. Okay, throttle is up, SAS is on. And, uh, yeah, let's go. Okay. Wait one second. There is still lag right here. Lots of lag. Oh, okay, it just wasn't uh, counting the time. Okay, that's fine. Now we go. Okay, so it was actually just not counting the time until I released the launch clamps. Okay, my mistake. Now we should still have our T-Teb here. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I'll I can unlock that now. Oop. 
six. I'm looking at the time. Uh, probably what two and a half seconds to each second. That's better than we had it uh, before. So for now, I'll take it. Though I think there's still some optimization that can be done over here. But I think it's uh, marginally smoother than it was uh, the last time we tried to launch this before all the updates. Okay, uh, so like I was saying, um, sometimes in the stock series you'll see me, instead of uh, waiting for the home and transfer phase angle, I'll note that I am at either the ascending or descending node and do a transfer back to uh, Kerbin in particular. So if I'm at Joule, I note that I'm at the ascending or descending node and then I'll just make a transfer to Kerbin instead of waiting the time for uh, for the Hohmann transfer. That's something I do in stock, but I haven't done much in uh, in realism overhaul. Okay, starting pitch program. Trajectory seems reasonably stable. I didn't really strut the payload down much, so... Don't know if it's gonna wiggle there. Oh, uh, yeah, let's see our Delta V now, since the VAB was giving us all sorts of weird information. No, it doesn't look good, based on this. How strange. It's possible that it's just the way that these are staged. Yeah, maybe that's just it. Maybe it assumed that I would light the NK-43 uh, at sea level and was calculating based on that. The optimal... Uh, right now we might have to overshoot the moon a little bit in order to meet up with it. The optimal way would be if we uh, timed it so that we would hit it direct. Uh, uh, sort of like a Holman transfer except burning out of the uh, ascending or descending node. Okay, connectivity is still good. Eventually gonna have to extend the AIES antenna that I usually use. You'll note that compared to the prograde vector I am uh, aiming a little bit higher because our the thrust out of the NK-43 is a little bit low. So that's why I'm sort of uh, aiming for the top of the prograde vector instead of the dead center. Okay, I think the we can light the NK-43 fairly well right now. I think it'll have most of its specific impulse right here. So we might as well do that. It's still a kerosene burning. Yeah, it's got uh, 345, which is pretty good for it. Now I'm going to throttle down all the engines. Still seems a little bit wiggly. You can see the engine gimbling is a little bit extreme. I'm gonna turn on the RCS to promote stability here. Uh, it might be using the stuff inside too. I should have turned that off ahead of time. I think I need some sort of aerodynamic stuff on here. Maybe some strakes will do it. This is clearly wiggling too much. It might be just Smart ASS. But still, I, I need to be able to rely on Smart ASS to keep things together. Otherwise, uh, clearly there's something wrong with the design. Well, looking pretty stable now. Well, no, actually it isn't. Look at all that uh, stuff going on with the gimbling. Nope. Definitely not ideal here. So right now I'm waiting for the boosters to run out and then I'll throttle up and then release them. Actually this is uh, configured with the fairing release first so 
Oh, there goes the weak release of the fairings. Again, everything's updated. And the fairings, I've, I've replaced them with the new versions in theory, so I don't know what's up with them. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. And booster release. Yeah, that's one other thing I did. I toned down the boosters, uh, the um, solid uh, separation, the separatrons. And that's because they were a little bit too energetic before. Hmm. Feels like maybe... I think we've got that little fairing caught on there. Don't know how that... Well, anyway. That'll be dumped eventually. Okay, now let's see what our Delta V is. Okay, yeah, everything's good. Yes, that is how much we wanted. Okay, so uh, thanks to the lighter load, we are experiencing a much smoother ride up than the previous test. And uh, I think we're going to have our orbit well under control here. Still got to figure out the procedural fairings. Obviously it works in other contexts. Uh, like uh, my colonization series, I think they're working out just fine. So, I'm not too sure what's up here. Oh darn, I uh, double clicked accidentally and now I don't have the moon as my target. The antenna extension worked, of course, now flight computer is not interfering with it, and uh, I also extended two of the solar panels. We have plenty of electric charge to spare, so no problems there. Okay, uh, 239 by 214, very good. Well, okay, but... Uh, for the second launch of a rocket, it's pretty good. Ooh, with with all the the possible stations being mission controls, the whole um, remote tech web has gotten quite a lot more complicated. So the plan is to burn out of our descending node, it looks like, and then try and meet the moon on this side here. And that means we'll that we're going to have to delay this arrival by quite a while. Now we could just stick in orbit around Earth for a while or we can just overburn and try and do it that way. Okay so strictly speaking I don't need to do a plane change here but I've got a lot of Delta V. I've got about 4500 in the in the second stage for the transfer because the payload is light and so I added a bit of, I'm gonna try try something, uh, I could go further but I've only limited, I've cut out about 10 degrees of our inclination difference between us and the moon and I'm satisfied with that and cutting that 10 degrees uh, we can get to about 3000 kilometers on the moon periapsis. We'll fix everything else up later and uh, probably at that ascending node in fact because we're gonna reach that before we reach the moon and it'll be convenient to do another inclination change there. Uh, hopefully we'll still be able to relight this engine. I forget if not that I'm particularly fond of this engine because of the noise but yeah it's got to five ignitions and we've got the RCS to stabilize the flow so everything should be good on that score. Gonna use RCS to turn towards the maneuver node Turn that off because it's going to just waste it. So yeah, uh, 3600 which includes uh, partial inclination change. I'm sure I had enough delta V to do the entire inclination change, uh, just uh, zero out the inclination difference. But that's not necessarily what I want to do because again I want to get into an inclined orbit around the moon. So. Might as well just uh, go for more, more moderate. Uh, as long as we get uh, reasonably close, and 3,000, I think uh, we can do a slight radio burn in order to correct that and get even closer than that. Uh, and we can do that using the, the fuel that we've got in the, 
in the tank that we've got for orbit. I guess we can dump this. Uh, I forget, does this have relights? Well, yeah, it does. And it's got the T-tip for it, too. We could technically use uh, that, but but yeah, we, we should really dump it. And I wonder if it's safe to. Well, let's see. Okay, well, still got this problem. Can I use... Uh, no, I'm going to use RCS to pull us forward a bit. Right, so now let's check our burn time. Probably around 10 minutes. So we should do about 7 minutes ahead of time. So uh, we'll go to T minus 7 minutes on this node. Okay, here we go. Uh, fuel flow is very unstable, so I will use RCS. Just forward a little bit. Okay, very stable. I think uh, we're good to go. So, uh, let's startle up and like this. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I'm not able to turn off RCS. I'm connected, pushing R, no time delay. I think we've got... Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll be back with you later because of this noise. I'll try and figure it out. Okay, guys, uh, we still got the noise and we still got flight computer interfering. Look at this. It's stopping me from toggling the RCS now and and from canceling that command so so even though I don't have signal to lay on flight computer is still messing with me I think I can solve this by quitting out and then uh, coming back to it but I want to finish this burn first hopefully it'll let me shut off the engine if it doesn't then we're gonna have other problems so um, alright I'll come back to you at the close to the end of this burn to see how that works out well, I have to say it's interesting that the whole problem with uh, flight computer interfering with me turning off the RCS started right when we lit the second stage and right when this uh, sort of weird background sound also started out. I have control over the craft, so I have hope that I can at least shut down the engine, but my keyboard commands are being interrupted by flight computer. So uh, I can use my control stick to control the craft, but not my keyboard, apparently. Well, let me see. No, I can still fire RCS with my keyboard, so... I don't know how exactly Flight Computer works to disrupt me turning off the RCS, but nevertheless allowing me to control the craft. Okay, I'm just gonna shut it down, and then we'll use RCS to fine-tune things. And once I see some low numbers here. Okay. So I shut down, but there's still the noise. In this view as well. And I still can't uh, turn off RCS. Okay, so using RCS to fine-tune it, we now have a pretty ideal approach. We're uh, coming in uh, 60 kilometers or thereabouts, so no problem there. But uh, other problems exist. So I'm going to uh, quit out and come back in and then see if we can uh, get rid of some of this glitchy stuff, especially with Flight Computer. Okay, so I quit out, come back in, and I was able to turn off RCS and I do not have that noise. So very interesting. I don't know what's causing the problem, but uh, I, well, obviously a part of it has to be uh, remote tech because uh, it was like computer interfering. 
What, how remote tech could cause the sound though, I have no idea. And why it started at this time to uh, block my commands and create that sound. Another good question. Anyway, uh, we're, we're properly linked up. Uh, as you can see, we're using our NRS, our Geosync, and then back to... Back to... Uh, which center is that, anyway? I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, but we're all right. And it looks like we're uh, go for the rest of this mission to the moon. We'll carry this uh, second stage with us. It's got relights. And so we'll be able to make use of it. So let's go. Oh, we've, okay, we briefly lost connection there. That's worrisome. Huh. But there are other other satellites around the moon, so maybe they'll be able to help when we otherwise lose connection. Right now we're uh, coming in for a crash course, so I don't feel any particular need to correct that right now. We'll wait until we're in the lunar sphere of influence. Okay, so here's our approach to the moon, but we don't have any connection with Earth right now, so I'm going to tell one of the geosync sats to uh, please pay attention to us. Yeah, this this geosync is tuned to Duna, so we'll, we'll just have it uh, tuned to the moon for now instead. Okay, now that should do the trick. Well, no, apparently it wasn't good enough, so we're going to have to wait until we're closer to do anything. Well, let's see how close we need to get. We need to make a slight correction to avoid having a negative periapsis right now. Don't know. Ah, there we go. Okay, good, good. Okay, now we're connected. This is a little bit dodgy, but... All right, so uh, let's just use RCS for this burn. That should do. Now, we should be in pretty good shape as far as communication is concerned when we actually do our, our uh, orbital burn. Right here. Got a lot of sats to work with. Eventually, of course, we're going to have to try a sample return mission with this launcher, but uh, that's down the road. Okay, that's that stage. I suppose we can just use the Ollage rockets for a little bit. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, we, we can just uh, continue on with the planned plan stage all right okay here we go ooh very nice didn't think it'd have an effect like that okay th those are nice effects okay fortunately we have a number of relights with this thing we also now have more control with our reaction wheel. Okay, very nice. Nice nice orbit. Now, let us uh, make sure we don't need to do cathane right now. I want a indication of what biome we're over. Because we don't want to be landing over something that uh, Oh, well, that's not very helpful. 
raw biome. Midlands, there we go. Okay, that's what I wanted. And how about uh, some countdowns for that? Okay. So let's uh, pick a landing spot. Let's continue in orbit. Just highlands down there? Poles, there we go. Okay, so... But that, that pole is in the dark, so we don't want to go there. We also want to... I think we're in a good place for connections. Oh well, there goes that idea. No connection now. Uh, ideally would like to land in a place where we have a direct connection instead of relying on some of the other satellites. But we've got poles here. Okay, so we'll try and land there. But we'll have to come around again. And I'm gonna start the deceleration burn, I suppose. Well, we've already got Midlands, so I don't need to do any sort of experiment here, I think. Even Mystery Goo probably has been done. Yep. So, let's just look at the map and start burning. That's enough. I don't like that it's still the Midlands. Don't know how much we still have on this stage. We don't really need it. One more relight on that. Okay. I'm wondering whether we're gonna fall short of the pulls or not. Looks like we'd end up pretty close, but tough to say without some sort of visible, you know, white patch, for instance. A patch of ice would be really helpful. Okay, that's the end of that stage, and I wanted to burn that out because we can't relight it anyway. Okay, so. Let's uh, get rid of, let's draw down and then get rid of that. Off it goes. Let's get the landing gear down. Islands. Come on, island craters. Midlands, no, come on. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, start this out, and uh, I guess we'll have to angle up a bit more. Okay, let me quickly verify. Infinite uh, relights, right? Right. Okay, um... Do you suppose that will be the pole? <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe we can risk it a little bit. Let's continue prograde. Let's try and find these, this pole. Poles, yes. Whew. Okay, good. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not an optimal trajectory, but but hopefully it'll get us to where we need to go. And of course, non-throttling engine, remember that.
Gonna put RCS on just in case. Uh, it seems like we've got some sort of ridge here. Don't like that. Oh, what a horrible terrain. Darn it. Uh, hold on. I'm going to try and hit the valley here, there. A little bit dodgy, but... It's a luxury of infinite relights. Nah, still not quite good. Oh darn. Well, I'm just going to have to sit down here as gently as possible. Oh darn, don't hop. Oh fudge. Okay. Oh darn. Ouch. Okay. Well, not the elegant landing we wanted, but, but, Observe Materials Bay. Let's transmit that data. Yeah. Come on, data. Let's stop that from tweaking out. Okay, hopefully we actually got that data. Yes. Well, it's inoperable now. So, Mystery Goo. Uh, transmit that data. Yeah. Good. 52 science. Gravioli detector. Transmit that. Okay, I don't know if uh, gathering data... No, this is uh, for, uh, I guess, EVE High Orbit. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize that. Okay. Um, log temperature. Okay. Seismic data. Yep. Now obviously this was a lot easier thanks to uh, no signal delay. I don't think I could have used an engine that doesn't throttle without uh, with signal delay. That would have been tough. A lot of pressure data can't be done right now. Okay, so we've done all the science we can do here. And even though uh, the landing was inelegant, uh, it worked. It worked. It did its job. So. On that note, uh, with a successful mission, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our little moon mission this time. And I'll try and make the landings a little bit better in the future. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.